Hey, what's happening guys? So you wanted to see some of the deeper math involved in those oscillator circuits and that's cool, we're gonna get into that. But I think first we need to cover a little bit deeper into the basics of things so that we have a complete mathematical understanding of what's going on with our capacitors and resistors, how, how they interact with Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's law and things of that nature. So, first of all, let me draw a little circuit here. I drew it with the camera off to save some time so that we can get right to the discussion. So, let's say a power supply is providing DC voltage V0 is connected in series to a resistor R and a capacitor C. Now, at time 0, switch S is put into position 1 and the capacitor charges through resistor R and we can get an expression describing the time dependence of the voltage T and the current at T. Now, if we put it, the switch in position 2, the capacitor with the, when the capacitor is already charged, the corresponding voltage between the two contacts uh, V0 at T0 of the switch through it be discharged through resistor R, we can find the VT and the VI as a function of time. So if we start at T0, Q0, our charge, is equal to zero. And on our discharge side, Q zero is equal to Q zero equal to V zero times C. Okay, so this is our, our charge and our discharge. Now, if we use Kirchhoff's law, we can find in our charge that V zero is equal to I times R plus Q over C. Or we can say the zero is equal to I R plus Q C in our discharge. See how that works? We're flipping them back and forth. It's pretty simple. And if we insert a relation that says, where am I going to put, I'll put it down here. that I equals DQ divided by DT. If we take this time-based equation, we can say that V0 is equal to DQ over DT times R plus Q over C. So all we're doing is we're taking the same equations and we're adding the time to the equation. And then over here again, we can say zero, our discharge state is equal to dq over dt. And what is it? Times r plus q over c. You see, all, all we've done is we've taken the charge and the discharge and we've kind of made them work together. So the theory behind this is called an inhomogeneous differential equation. And it says in the limit of very long times, as T approaches infinity, the charge approaches the, the final value. So we can say that Q zero equals V zero times C. And where did we see that? Well, we saw that back up here as well. So, as we move on, then we're going to need to say that Q at time equals infinity equals Q0 equals V0 times C. So our charge at infinity, because it's never really reaching the full charge because it's being halved every time, is equal to the charge at time zero times V zero times C. And 
our solution to this becomes Q at T is equal to A prime E minus T over RC plus Q zero. Now, on the discharge side, we can again use integration and say, you know, dq over q is equal to minus dt over rc, or the ln of q equals t over rc plus ln a. Okay? So you guys wanted to get into the calculus, we're getting into it now. So now that we've done that, we can do determination of the constants from our starting positions. And we can say that Q0 is equal to A prime plus Q0 equal to zero. Actually, A prime equals minus Q at zero, or QT is equal to Q0, one to the minus E, to the minus T over RC. And that goes there. And finally, V0C, one minus E, to the minus T over RC. And there you see we have our time and our RC this is our time constant, which is what we get from the resistor and the capacitor together. Everything else is just charging and discharging. There's nothing magical about it. So once we have all of this information, we can calculate the current. We can say that the current at T is equal to V0 over R E minus T RC, or the discharge version of it would be basically the current at T equals VO over, it's basically the same thing, we're just swapping it back and forth. And it's pretty easy to see in a graph form. So if we draw ourselves a little graph here, this is T, this is I, this is our current at this point, at our point T. And then our graph kinda looks like this. And we can say this point here is V0 over R. Again, if we do it for our discharging capacitor, current at T, again this is T, looks more like this, and we have minus V0 over R. And the current and everything, we can also do the voltage, which is, you know, VC is simply charge divided by capacitance. So VC at time T is equal to V0, 1 minus E to the minus T over RC. That's simple, right? I mean, there's really not much else that we can do about it, except that we know those, you know, we could put in values here, but that's the basic theory behind it. So here's my question to you. How should R and or C be changed in order to obtain a shorter rise time? How can we do that? Think about that answer in the comments. It should be quite simple, but if you have questions, ask them, and we'll answer them, okay? Did your brain hurt yet? Mine does. So let's stop talking about that. Now we've covered the basics. Now we can go into the calculus of those circuits that we can do the differential equations and things along those natures, integrations, okay? All right, hope you're ready. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons, man. I couldn't do it without you guys. You keep everything flowing and you keep the channel alive. That's it. I am out. Peace.